In the poem, The Field Mouse, how does the speaker feel about the mouse? In this lesson, you will learn how to describe a character's feelings by examining their thoughts, speech, and actions. Let's review. We've been reading the poem, The Field Mouse, written by Cecil Francis Alexander. We've already figured out that the speaker in this poem is a little boy, and we know that he's talking directly to a mouse. So, how do we figure out what a character is like? Good readers figure out what a character is like by paying attention to that character's actions, feelings, thoughts, and speech. Sometimes the author will tell us right there in the text how a character feels, like by telling us that a character felt really sad when her birthday party was ruined. But more often than not, we need to do a little bit of detective work to figure it out by looking for clues in the rest of what we know about the character. For example, if we read that a character's eyes filled up with tears when she saw her squished birthday cake, we could figure out she's probably very sad, even though the author didn't directly tell us. A common mistake readers sometimes make is to think only about how they would feel if they were in the text and just assume that the characters would feel the same way. But it's important to remember that not everybody feels the same way that you did, so not everybody would have the same reactions. It's important to use clues from the text to figure out how a character feels rather than just think about your own experience. In our lesson, we're going to follow four steps. First, we'll find the places in the text that give you information about the character. Next, we'll notice if the author directly tells you how a character feels. Third, we'll gather more information by identifying the character's thoughts, speech, and actions. It's important that we keep doing steps one through three until we have several pieces of evidence. Finally, we'll ask, how would somebody thinking, speaking, and acting like this probably feel? So our first step is to go back into the text and look for parts where the author is giving us information about the character. Remember, we're trying to answer the question, how does the speaker feel about the mouse? So I'm going to look for parts that give me information about the speaker that also have to do with the mouse. So let's see, as I glance back through the poem, I see information about the speaker right here in the first stanza. My next step is to notice if the author is giving me direct information about the character's feelings, but hmm, in this case, he isn't. I don't see any words that directly tell me about the character's feelings. That means I'm gonna need to do a little bit of detective work. I need to identify what the character is thinking, saying, or doing. Let's look closer at this stanza, and I'll jot down my notes about the character's thoughts, speech, and actions. In line six, it says, field mouse, I can see you pass. So it sounds like the speaker is watching the mouse. I'll jot that down as an action. Now, while he's watching the mouse, the speaker also describes what the mouse looks like. He thinks that the mouse has fur so soft and brown, so I'll add that down under his thoughts. He also says that the field mouse has an eye so round and merry, so I'll add that to the list. This is some good evidence, but before I can do my final step and figure out how the character feels, I think I need to gather some more examples. So I'm going to follow steps one through three again. The last stanza is another part where we get more information about the speaker and the mouse. Once again, the author does not directly tell me how the speaker feels, so I have to gather evidence by identifying thoughts, speech, and actions. Hmm, in line 21, it sounds like the speaker is again describing the mouse. He thinks it's a pretty quiet, harmless thing. Then, in line 23 and 24, the speaker tells the mouse to keep away from corn and house so that none will harm you, little mouse. He's trying to tell the mouse what to do so that he will stay safe. So now I have quite a bit of evidence through the speaker's thoughts, speech, and actions, so I can move on to our final step, which is to ask myself, how would someone thinking, speaking, and acting like this probably feel? I'll start with the clues I gathered about the speaker's thoughts and try to figure out how the speaker is probably feeling. Hmm, as I read through all these describing words, soft, merry, pretty, harmless, they're all really nice, kind words. Some people might think that mice are gross or scary, but not the speaker. Words like soft and harmless tell me that the speaker thinks the mouse is really nice, and words like merry and pretty tell me he might even think the mouse is kind of cute. 
from the speech evidence, I found it also tells me that the speaker likes the mouse. He really doesn't want the mouse to get hurt. He's really friendly towards the little mouse, and I see that in the speaker's actions as well. He spends so much time watching the mouse, he must really be happy when he does so and enjoy being with the mouse. So now I'm ready to answer my question. Remember our question was, in the poem The Field Mouse, how does the speaker feel about the mouse? So now I can turn all those notes into complete sentences. So let's see, I think I'll write, in the poem The Field Mouse, the speaker likes the mouse and thinks he's cute. He likes to spend time with the mouse and watch him. He treats the mouse like a little friend. So remember, in this lesson, we followed four steps. First, we found the places in the text that give you information about the character. Then, we notice that the author directly tells us how a character feels. Third, we gathered more evidence by identifying the character's thoughts, speech, and actions, and then we continued to do steps one through three until we found a bunch of evidence. Finally, we asked, how would someone thinking, speaking, and acting like this probably feel? In this lesson, you have learned how to describe a character's feelings by examining their thoughts, speech, and actions. 